How you feeling? I'm Everything good? good? Awesome. Yeah, Light that shit up, bro. I'm gonna do that. Waiting to see it. You know, I seen it when you was in the South out here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get him right. I'm gonna get right. This is a tough one. It's a tough one. What's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? How you doing? Excellent. How are you? I'm doing well. Whoa. What's happening? What's happening with you, boy? Good to see you, man. Good to see y'all. Yes, sir. Feel good? Yeah, well, we did. We stopped by Pittsburgh yesterday. They say they're ready for you. Yeah. Yeah. You see? You see? Yeah, good one. Get on that grass first, eh? That too. That's where it all started. Y'all got dogs in this division. Nah, yeah, yeah. This division will be tough. It's gonna. I tell I think it's gonna be the best one. Yeah, us in the East. Yeah, this is good too. AFC is a monster too. I just think though, like whoever finishes at the bottom of the North is better than a ton of teams because you got to think just quarterback wise, it's you, Lamar, uh, Joe, but then Kenny too, all first rounders. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Three of the three of the four been to Pro Bowls already. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's just. The whole division, man. I'll have to fight no, every not. week. Yeah. Two gonna come out for sure, huh? Two oh, they, they'll come get out two. Yeah, 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 they got a sure. chance to get three though. Bad, with mean. the with the seventh, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's the thing. We gotta start fast. Cause I think the first two, four games we got all three division teams. Really? Yeah, I think it's. I know the first Cincy two weeks Pitt, like that. Tennessee and then Baltimore. Dang. Yeah. yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Gotta start right. <laughs> Popcorn ready. Fast. 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 That's, that's what you want, though, man. I mean, that's what that's what this level about. It's a lot of tiebreakers. Good on good. Yeah. Those are all tiebreakers. Earlier division mm -hmm. games early like that. Yeah. Play big later in the year. See, the, the Seventeen weeks has me so thrown off though. Did y'all yeah. play seventeen games now? Yeah. You like, probably so used to sixteen, so you know how. It, mm -hmm. But right. you know, it's just coaches that tell you break it up into quarters. Yeah. It's like, man, you go three and one in every quarter and maybe two and two. Like, shoot, you finish 11. Like, I was always good with those numbers. Trying now, to it out. now you got the extra game. <laughs> yeah, you got the extra game. I was like, I don't know what the hell yeah, it's funny, the extra game sometimes don't mean the damn thing. And it's sometimes going to be everything. It's going to be every day. Yeah. Eight and nine might get you in. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. You can, eight and nine. That's cool, man. Again, we're having this one. That's, that's, that's good, good man. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. They got the Lions, too. Yeah, they ain't even know, bro. Yeah, that's bro. dope, bro. They said they team. You guys remember when you were this What's young? What's up, man? I do, you Coach. This? I do, Coach. What's up with you, Coach? How you doing, How you brother? feeling? You sipping good, man. Great to see you, Coach. You, you too, bro. All right? Yes, sir. This is cool. I tell you guys all the time. All right, first year you played football. Mm -hmm. What was your number? 65. 94. I played DN. That was 88. I played DN. I played DN. I was a terrible nose. And tight end. I was 55. 55. You played O line? I was a linebacker. Linebacker. But playing then playing quarterback wearing number 55. Yeah. Right. But that's why I always remind the guys like, this is a kid's game. Yeah. I mean, so to be able to see this and see these guys. That is awesome. Now, when you got that helmet, that was the best feeling. Of any any other equipment you got, the helmet was the staple. Remember going up in the, the attic of the YMCA? That's what we did. Like, there's yeah. no air. <laughs> yep. And you're like, here, you here's pick this out helmet your from side. 1964. Right. Yeah, does it still fit you? Yep. We crazy. had this, we had a shed, and mm -hmm. everybody was just standing in line, and you walk in the shed, and they yeah. look through the helmets. You didn't get what face mask you want. You just no. got the helmet oh, yeah. that fit. Oh, yeah. You weren't good. You was in the back of the line. <laughs> you was taking them big, big ass pads. <laughs> Do you guys have kids playing football? You guys have kids. It's my son's no, no. first year. How old? Eleven. Okay. Yeah. So I got. Old, I have an eleven-year-old playing as well. Mm. And. Do you remember how hard it was to put the, your knee pads in yep. your pants? Yeah. yeah. Now they're sewn in. Yeah. yeah. It's different. It's a remember different, those days Coach, when you had to like thing. turn it inside out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would flip my pants inside out and put all my pads right. in first. Just talking and about then you just stick your hand in and pull them back yes. through. What were we talking about? The big shoulder yeah, pads and big, big thigh pads? I wanted the big now thigh everybody pads. wants the smallest yeah. thing they can find. I know. You watch yeah. the tape from the 80s shows up. Those shoulder pads. Huge. Even the quarterbacks, huh? And, and everybody, huge. and everybody that run, it did like they was running like this. Yeah, right. like, like, flapping around. Like oh, Nick, ready? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay yeah. we'll go. Okay, yeah. cool. you got. We'll you be at the practice, coach. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we'll be at practice. Yes, sir. Good to see you too, coach. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming. Great to see you. All right, coach. Good to see you, man. I was telling Pat P that when we was in Pittsburgh. I say, man, I say, when you get in these competitive rooms and the environment makes you better. I said, if I'm coming to you on Wednesday, hey, Pat P, look, I watch first and second down pass. Right, I was like, when they get in play action, we get this formation. Here's how we're gonna pass this off. I said, if you can't come back to me, well, yeah, I saw that too. I was thinking we do this. Yep. I said, that's an issue. Yep. Maybe. I said, so eventually, yeah. I said, if you're a competitor and you care, eventually you like, hey, RC ain't gonna be coming to me on Wednesday. 
with stuff I don't know. I'm confused. And I'm yeah. confused. Or, 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 or stuff I can't have conversations about. Or I can't bring him something to get better. I told yeah. McVay that you know? same thing. What we used to do on Wednesdays, we take the, the, the leader or the vet in whatever position group, mm -hmm. we just go to their crib and let the tape run for like an hour. And like, let's just share notes together. Communicate right there. Tuesday night, that's what I watch. Yeah. I just only wanted to be prepared for that. Yeah. You know, and then I'd move into whatever we were doing the next day, that's what I'd watch. Then on Friday, I'd watch. On Friday, I'd watch the games and have it called plays. But I wouldn't watch cut-ups on Friday. The Saturday, I wouldn't watch nothing. Nothing on Saturday. Because I was like, if I don't know it now, it ain't that important. <laughs> if, I, hey, if I'd have done all this work, <laughs> Guys be in front of their locker room, in front of their locker with notes yeah. on Sunday on game day. Like, it's time to just chill right now. Get your body Bro, together. Get your was, mind right. I was like, I didn't want to read something late and be thinking about it the whole game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, when they get three by, when I get three by one, uh, Z motion to two by two is this. Nah, if I don't right. know that by now, it's okay. Let me the thing. I knew my job was to stop the run. <laughs> you were not going to have a run. I ain't know what was coming. <laughs> A lot of time, it's the luck of the hole, too, unless you have different little nuggets, yeah. like cover two I high backside back side. You got a weak support. Go! What's up, man? What's up? What's up, man? What's up, man? What's up, dog? What up, Nick, man? Good to see yes, you, man. Sir. Hey, you know, when, when running backs go around, I just got to bow my neck one time, Chan. <laughs> and then right. I see I see the reaction. It didn't seem that Nick cared, so I put him back. I put my traps I back thought, down. I thought Fred was big. Good Nick. Yeah, bro. <laughs> bro, when he was sitting next to Maurice Jones Drew the other day, yeah. who is rounder now, for lack of a better term. I was like, Stay off my teammate, man. Like, That's still like, my dog. And I was like, dang, Nick Wyatt dude, man. Yeah, he's, a, he's just a big dude. Hold up. Limitless. I feel like I'm pinning it. I fought the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling got me up. Uh, on the mission got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, only vision I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Niggas still be kind of pinning it. I fought the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling got me up. Uh, on the mission got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, hey, man, man, thank you so much, man. Yeah, I appreciate and, it. And welcome yeah. to the show. Uh, I'm excited because I never hear you talk. I didn't mm. know you had a voice till like three yeah. weeks ago. <laughs> Obviously, Fred Taylor, mm -hmm. Chan, I'm RC. I uh, just want to get right into it because you're just giving us your time. In the time of year, we understand mm -hmm. it's tight. When you left Georgia, you wrote a letter to the fans. And in that, it was, it said, my family has started a legacy and I want to make them proud. And in that, speaking of Chubbtown, yeah. uh, John Henry Chubb, you know, f was in, was it North Carolina, South Carolina? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And, they, they go down eight sons, yeah. one daughter, and they start Chub Top. Yeah. Uh, they were free blacks mm. at the time. When you have that sort of legacy behind your name, what does that mean to you? I mean, it means a lot. I know I'm carrying a lot with my name. You know, it's not, it's not just me as an individual. It's a legacy, as you say, you know. My family, they have a neat story. You know, very strong people from 1800s, 1700s to be free at that time. You know, it's, it's incredible. And just hearing the stories from growing up, living, really close to Chubtown and my dad being a part of Chubtown helped build my dad's dad building, you know, still working in it and things like that. I mean, it's special to me, you know, and to be able to go back and see when my family started and to have Chubbs now, I mean, like Bradley, you know, playing the NFL, I mean, it's definitely special. Having that, I want to say pressure, but that responsibility yeah. of everything, like you're saying, coming out of, you know, free slavery yeah. and then having the voice, having the, the, the influence that you have now, is there anything more that you feel on yourself or it's just you were born with it? I think I was born with it. I think because of what they did back then, you know, just how strong they were, you know, I feel like it's inside of me, you know, just if they can go through that, which I can't imagine, you know, at that time, what they, what they had to face, you know, me playing a, a sport of football, which is fun, you know, I think, I think it carried over through me. So we, uh, we were driving in this morning and we saw a sign coming in, some exit that says Strongville. Yeah, yeah. So you from Chubbstown or Strongville? Cause <laughs> <laughs> when we were doing research, we saw some high school photos. Yeah, You're yeah. running track. Yeah, yeah. Looked like you had on a wrestling uniform. Yeah, one piece. But you was yeah. busting up out of that yeah. thing. Growing up, how often did the parents or the other coaches ask for your birth certificate? Because you a beast, man. Yeah, I know. I think um, in high school, my junior, senior year, I kind of developed, like, I look like this back in high school and so I think um <laughs> I think I think at that point everybody, everybody I got the steroids you know he's on steroids he's juicing I got all of that you know people not believing my age but um 
I mean, I just worked. That's all I did. I just worked out in high school like three times a day, like legitimately. Yeah. You know, you made a decision. You were a four-star athlete, as Fred was talking about. You led the state of Georgia in rushing. You went for, what, 2,600 one year, I think. 2,600 the next year, 38 tubs, then 41 yeah. tubs. You know, Georgia is a football state, much like Louisiana. But you make the decision to go to Georgia when mm -hmm. Todd Gurley was there. Yeah. I think Marshall yeah. was there as well. Sony Michelle Sony commits committed. with you, yeah. who's a, a five-star. Mm -hmm. When you are the man at Cedartown and you're the guy, what was it about Georgia that made that the right place for you, especially with all the competition you knew you'd have there? But the biggest thing was Georgia was home to me. You know, I was born and raised there. Um, I love living there. One day I want to, when I'm retired, I want to live in Georgia. So I feel like Georgia was mine, even though they're already going there. None of those guys were from Georgia. And so I feel like I had that edge, you know, and I saw the competition. I mean, I played behind, Todd was a, he would be a junior when I got there, him and Keith. So I could play behind them one year, you know, hopefully they leave, which Ty, Ty ended up leaving. Keith stayed in the, another year, but also, you know, playing with Sony and, I think me and him became like we're brothers now because because that decision we both made and thinking I think back then looking at it I was nervous you know going in as a freshman everyone's saying that I'm gonna get red shirted because I was a four star Sony was five star Keith and Todd already playing really good ball so like like the pressure thing man I just I use that to my will you know I continue to grind and I just go back to work. Question on Sony you said you're like brothers he recently retired. Mm -hmm. Did you have any conversations with him before or after making that decision? You know, um, being honest, uh, I haven't talked to him yet. You know, um, I don't really understand what went into it. Uh, he was trying hard to make a team, and he finally got picked up by the Rams. And then he retires. You know, I haven't, I haven't, I called him, but he was on the plane. He called me back. I was in camp. We we haven't talked yet, but I need like a lot of time for us to sit down <laughs> and talk. So I haven't hit him yet, but I'm, I'm sure we're gonna figure it out. So you uh, you mentioned competition. When you got here, it was Carlos High and uh, I think Duke Johnson, yeah. 2018. Mm -hmm. You guys traded. Carlos to Jacksonville, mm. and you start. You you were insert, yeah. inserted as a starter. Yeah. You haven't looked back since then. Mm. Four straight Pro Bowls, tons and tons of carry. You you lead the all running backs in yards. I think over like 6,300 yards in five years. Mm. Lot, uh, some would probably call it wear and tear in this state mm -hmm. where the where the game is. But do you consider yourself the best running back in football? And let me say this. You weren't always in my top five yeah, yeah. backs. Mm -hmm. And there's no knock necessarily on you. Yeah. It's just me and my biasness. You're a bulldog. I'm yeah. a gator. So I was a little kind of. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I was a little kind of yeah. um, sideways with that. But now you're, you're number one in my book mm -hmm. right now. So competition, like, that's just your thing. That's what drives you the most. It is, man. It drives me. That's, that fuels my fire. Just, you know, um, I'm not active on Twitter and social media, but I see everything. You know, I, I do search my name. I see who's talking. I'm, I'm guilty of that. I see wh where they got me ranked. I see all that stuff, and I don't say anything. No, I just I put my head down. I go to work. That's that's why I'm here. That's that's what's got me to this point. Just seeing everything, hearing everything, and just it's proving everybody wrong. I guess I can go back and ask the original question: Are you the best back in the league? <laughs> I think I am. I think I'm the best back. As you, uh, as you talk about Georgia with the competition with Gurley and Michelle, and you have no problem going and going to play, and then you come here, Kareem was here, and you have yeah. other good back. As a running back, doesn't that take away from your carries, your yards, your numbers that are going to get you paid and get you mm -hmm. the respect of people saying it? Like, I, if I was a running back, I don't want nobody else good in the backfield, yeah. so I want all the carries. Yeah. It, it, shouldn't y'all running backs be selfish? <laughs> that story of my life, man, playing with Sony all throughout college and coming here and, you know, playing with Kareem, but... You can look at it like that if you want, but me personally, I, I, I like it because, I mean, you're sharing the load in a way and also, I mean, it helps you out in the long run. But the way I approach it is I know I got a certain amount of carries, so I got to break one. I got to break one, break two, and I get the chance because I know at some point Kareem's going to get a chance to break one too. I can't let him outperform me, you know, so at some <laughs> point I got I to gotta get hit the home run and I got to separate myself from whoever I'm sharing the backfield with. I'm, I want to take you back because you mentioned all the competition that you've played with. It's October 2015, early on against Tennessee. You get a carry. I think it's a it's a video that most of us have, have watched and, and winced uh, when, in seeing it live. Everyone's scared because you were such a dynamic player as a young sophomore at Georgia. But to see something like that happen to a young man with so much promise, it's always, will he ever be the same? Can this guy get back? to everything he's always been. When you're lying on that field in Tennessee, 
knowing you suffered a serious knee injury, what were the thoughts in your head as a young man? Yeah, I still remember it, man. It was um, it was a crazy time for me just because I had, you know, an incredible freshman season. And then a sophomore year, I was doing good too. I think like six games, 700 yards, you know, I'm in a Heisman campaign and everything's going perfectly for me. And then that one play, you know, I pretty much lost it all. I tore everything in my left knee except my ACL, my MCL. So everything else is, you name it, it was, it was torn, even my hamstring, you know, um, it was bad. And in that moment, I didn't understand the, the severity of it because I was young. I just assumed it was ACL, you know, I being a running back, you know, I tore my ACL, it happens. But once I saw the video and I saw how my doctors were, you know, kind of talking and whispering amongst themselves, I realized it was bad. And I remember thinking back to like when I was in high school, I saw Lattimore, he had, he had kind of a, a similar injury. And so I, I don't know what happened with him, but I know he, he didn't really come back. He didn't really play anymore. So in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, my career is probably over, but I'm thankful for Georgia, you know, my family and just God just for, me getting back to myself and being able to, you know, make it to the NFL and have a great senior year at Georgia and just to be where I am now, you know, I'm just thankful that, you know, things didn't go that bad for me. You know, you've gotten to the point now, you, you know, you're looked at as the premier back in the league. And right now running backs are in a position that seems to be devaluing their worth as players, yet continuing to utilize them mm. for success on the field. You guys had an opportunity to get on the Zoom call, yeah. and this was prior to Saquon deciding to go to camp and you know sign the one-year deal with the New York Giants. But there's Tony Pollard, who was mm. out there, who will be playing on the one-year. Josh Jacobs, you know, not reporting to camp. And you, who aren't always extremely vocal, you spoke about the call and some of the things that you guys tried to communicate during that call. How do you feel about the running back position and the way that they are being treated as it pertains to contract negotiations? Yeah, I think we're in a tough spot. I mean, and be afraid, you, can, you, you understand too. I mean, they use us in every way. You know, we run the ball, we catch, we block. That's the three most important things in football and we do all three at a high level. But when it comes to negotiations, they don't, they don't value that because of our wear and tear, I assume that's why. They, they assume we will get hurt, you know, at a faster rate than anyone else. And they also assume that we can easily be replaced. Yeah, it's tough. That's why, that's why you know, I work as hard as I can because for one, stay healthy, and two, I don't want to be replaceable. You know, I, I don't want, they think anyone can come in and do what I do. But as far as a whole, I mean, they have us where they want us. I mean, what, what can we ultimately do? You know, at the end of the day, it's their call. We can sit out, but we're going to lose money, and they can replace us. They're, they're going to try to replace us. And in some cases, it's worked. I mean, Eckler came in behind Ingram. You know, he's, he did good. Yeah, they had James uh, Conner. James Conner came yeah, behind yeah. him, and he did good. It's successful. So I don't want to be in that situation where somebody come behind me and take my spot. So I'm healthy. <laughs> and first thing first, I'm healthy, and I'm separating myself from everyone around me. I guess the – I don't want to say the argument, but the thought is that a team with a running game can't keep up with them quarterbacks. If you're going to run the ball, you need 12, 15 plays to score, where Patrick Mahomes go out there in two and three and bing, 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 bing. What would you say to people that say, hey, hey, you can't have a Super Bowl winning team right now if it's run based? I think the difference in passing and running the ball is, I mean, anybody can go out there and pass and, you know, it's pretty, it's fast, you know, efficient. But to beat the team down, you got to run the ball. To physically beat them down, you run the ball. And you can go out there and pass. They're going to pass through. It's going to be a pass like a shootout, you know. But when you run the ball, you just beat the team down, they will quit. I think that's the biggest thing. Like, you want a team to quit and, like, yield, you run the ball down their throat. And that's, that's the way to stop them. And if a team can – if that can be their mindset, I think that's better than the passing team. Some of your team goals, I'm sure, would be to win the division. Mm -hmm. But personal goals, uh, short-term and long-term, mm -hmm. uh, what are some of your short-term goals? And, and as far as long-term, do you ever look at the history of – Jim Brown and say, I want to try to outdo him, you know, uh, take away his team. Well, not take away, but yeah. uh, outdo his team, Mark. You know, Jim has some crazy stats. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can touch it with, you know, with You're the halfway yards. There. You're yeah, halfway I am there. halfway there. I am halfway there. But um, I started my life, too, man, playing by Herschel Walker. I couldn't catch him. <laughs> and then, like, Jim Brown, like, you know, I, I want to go somewhere first and set the record. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, I can try my best. I don't really have personal goals. You know, I don't. I just work as hard as I can, and I feel like you know everything will work out for me. But I think, I think now, going into year six, I've had these you know steady years of thousand yards, thousand yards. But I want that like that one crazy breakout year. You know, like 
just a crazy, a crazy year. You know, not not just a typical quiet, silent 150 yard game, like, you know, something that like flashy or something. So like like, like 300, breaking a single single game mark. I ain't, I ain't even had three I ain't even had two hundred yard game yet. <laughs> no? No, I haven't. So I mean even even that, like something like something different that's also, you know, great. But when looking at your numbers, the one thing that stand out the most to me is your career average per carry mm, yeah. in this amount of time. I think you've had uh, around twelve hundred carries. You're averaging over five point two yeah. you know per carry, which is I think it would lead all running backs in the history of the game, yeah. you know, at, at that amount of carries per career. Yeah. Um, I think one of your strongest attributes are obviously your power. Mm -hmm. People underestimate your shift in this and your vision. Mm -hmm. You know, what would you consider your strongest point? Strongest point? That's a great question. I would, I would say my power and my vision. Power, vision, explo explosiveness, I, I would say, but... You know the vision. That that's just kind of an instinct. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't I don't make the best reads all the time. But my my strength, you know, it, over it overcomes that just because I can break a tackle. You know, if I make a bad read, I'm just gonna try to break the tackle and make it right. Do you, do you right. ever look at the film and say, "Damn, how the hell I did that"? I have I have once in a while. Every every now and then I look at the film like I don't know I don't know how I did that. I don't even remember how I did it. It was like COVID year. I made a play against the the, um, the Eagles. Like I jump cut and I reverse and I did some crazy play. And I, I didn't know I even did it. And the next week in practice, Coach Stump, he like has the drill set oh. of like the play I made. And I'm like, I, can't, I don't even know what I did. He, he told me to do it again. Like, I don't know what I did. Right, like, right. It just happened so fast. Can I talk about the Nick Chubb thirst traps? Oh. Right? So, so you, you know, you're not active on social media, you yeah. said, but you will, you know, search your name just to get a little motivation from people doubting you, especially after all of your accomplishments. I know you're not going to be on social media with your shirt off mm -hmm. and stuff like that, but a Nick Chubb thirst trap, they come around every off season around <laughs> July, right? There's going to be like 700 pounds on the squat yeah, bar. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a lot of high school kids jumping around real fired up. <laughs> they use the tsunami bar so it could bend and now everybody on TV is like, oh, the bar's bending. I'm like, well, that's what it's supposed yeah. to do, guys. <laughs> Nick's tricking y'all. He ain't going to say that. <laughs> yeah. But you go back to your high school in Cedar Town and work out. And we're not in the time where Fred played, right? Mm -hmm. Where you had to train in the sandbox by yourself because they didn't have facilities around in the <laughs> early 50s. You know, this is probably right after Chubb Town <laughs> was founded. Um, but not for real, you know, you go back every year, uh, Jamie Abrams, who's the, the coach that was hired there, said you were at the introductory meeting, right? Like you were just one of the guys. Uh, what is it? Mike Worthington, I yeah. think, is the trainer there. And yeah, you said you owe him so much for your career in the age where you get to watch everybody train because at these different facilities and these different places you still choose to go back to your hometown and get that real grind in what is it about your school what is it about where you're from what is it is about that training that always brings you back home the biggest thing for me is just you know i remember how hungry i was as a high school kid and it's so hard for me to tap into that mindset again you know I, I can't be that hungry kid that worked out three times a day mentally I just can't because I I mean I have a lot of things now I'm successful so that's the closest thing I can do to feel like I'm still that high school kid is to go back to my hometown with Mikey Worthington in the same weight room when I had nothing you know that's the same place I had nothing in it's the same coach who was there who believed in me as a young kid to go back and just to feel all that again that that is just it works magic for me. It's it's a blessing I'm able to do that. It's a special feeling and I mean I all my success comes from me going home in middle of Cedar Town, which is nothing around and just grinding for six months straight. And and bro on leg day, you just say put it all on the bar. <laughs> like is there a number cause that we you count six seventy, seven fifty, yeah. whatever it is. It's just all of it, coach. Yeah. Put it all on there. And the fun thing about it, I don't really have a max. I just stop at some point. Like I just be like, all right, that, that's enough. That's enough for this year, you know. But um, yeah, it's because uh, Worthington, man, he he pushes me. And sometimes I don't feel like doing all that weight. He say, Nick, when you was in high school, you would have did it. He just like takes me back to you know me being hungry, and he just stays on me, makes sure I'm working every day. And I get under that bar and I squat, and that's motivation too. I mean, I'm <laughs> I don't want to fall and get hurt, get down. So I gotta get, I gotta pull pull it up. You know, before every game, right, there's the, the uniform check man, right? <laughs> the guy that comes around, he checks your uniform. And if you're a DB, 
there is something yeah. you're going to have to dispute yeah, yeah. every game, right? It's a towel in the wrong place, my socks or something like that. I know for certain Nick Chubb <laughs> has never in life gotten a uniform fine. You remember the, you know, the little dude, the uniform guy that's on the wall yeah. that got his gloves on and he's standing straight up and his socks are pulled yeah, all the way to me. this spot. Yeah, that's You me. dress exactly yeah. like that every game. I hear that, Nick, I hear that all the time. Why no swag? Why don't you no try swag. at all, bro? I don't know what they want me to do. I got <laughs> the socks and the gloves on. Like, what else? You want me to wear a sleeve, visor? That's just not me. I'm just, I'm just not that person, man. My mind is so focused on the game, man. I can't. That that would distract me. And I don't. I don't like. I like my hands. I don't like. I don't want to feel nothing. No more. I want to feel that ball on my arms. I gotta feel that ball. So I mean, that's that's just who I am. That's just what I do. Is is the Cle is the Cleveland market big enough for a superstar like yourself? Well, I'll say it is. I mean, yeah. I'm here, so I I think it is. I mean, they had LeBron, so. <laughs> hey, that's a, yeah. that's a that's high a, quality point. That is a high quality yeah, point. I'm nowhere near that. That's level. a high quality yeah. point. But I, I say it because I think sometimes when you have those conversations, you know, about the running backs, mm -hmm. you know, some guys are flashy. You know, if you take Saquon, for example, who's also one of my favorites, playing in the New York market, mm -hmm. you know, I've always felt like a lot of guys that play in that market. They can do the, even though he's not doing the bare minimum, they can do the bare minimum and they'll get such high praise. Whereas a guy like yourself who's down here grinding, you don't say much. You just come to work, you know, make guys look silly on the field. Mm -hmm. And then you don't get the same type of love yeah. when it comes to marketability. Yeah. So that's the reason I, I asked yeah. that question. Yeah, I see that too. But I also think just because I think inside of Cleveland, like the people and the fans here, I feel like they give me that hype and that recognition that I deserve. I feel like we match perfectly. Like how I approach the game, how I work, the fans of Cleveland love that. You know, and I love working to um, win games for them too. So it's a mutual thing. And inside of Cleveland, I, I am like, I am that demand, you know. You are. But I, sure. the, outside the world, you know, it is what it is. They got other opinions, but I like being right here. On the field and off the field, you got four now. He, you yeah, can't yeah. stack that box. Yeah, yeah. If Deshaun back there, you better stack yeah. that box. Have you seen if you the plan and just seeing how or thinking about how much easier your job is gonna be now that you got four? Oh, I love it, man. I've I've been saying two high safeties. I don't ever see two high safeties. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Check to the run, you know. But yeah, I love it. It'll definitely make my job easier, make the O line job easier. I mean, you pick your poison. You want to stack the box. I mean, Deshaun can make any throw on the field. You want to lighten the box. You know, we can do any run we want. So I think it's definitely working in our favor. You know. And after the 2000, I think it was 19 season, uh, you were on Jim Rome, which is another shocking development in my studies. And, you know, you said that it was a talented team, but you felt like y'all fell short. And you mentioned how when you have a talented team, but you don't feel like the, the work is to the level that it needs to be, you don't find the success yeah. you're looking for. What is this team, which is immensely talented? Yeah. When you think about Coop, Elijah Moore, David Njoku, yourself, you mentioned Deshaun Watson, adding pieces defensively as well. And Kevin Stefanski, who's one of the best offensive minds in football, yeah. from the outside looking in, it's okay, this should be the year. The other side of it is, too, the AFC North is yeah. stacked, yeah. right? You have first-round quarterbacks everywhere. You have teams that's going to the Super Bowl, MVPs, all of those things. What are you guys focusing on this year so all of that talent can equal wins on the football field? Yeah. The biggest thing we're focusing on is, is ourselves. You know, um, we practiced in Green Bar for 10 days. We would know it was, it was, it was private. No, no fans were there. It was just us worrying about us. And then um, we came home, and we're not really doing much. Now, we're not really traveling. We have a joint practice with Philly. But other than that, I mean, it's just us worrying about us. Our, 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 our public days, like maybe like eight days, fans can come. You know, I think the biggest thing is us being the Browns and head down grinding and working. And one of our one of our sayings is that we just work. We're a team and we work. And I think this year we've been working very hard. You know, guys have been doing extra. Guys have been, you know, in the weight room longer, stretching more. And I think all that just coming together, it's just in, in a position where we are a better team. You know, going forward, when you think about what the traditions here are. You mentioned your fans, bro. Like, when I played in Pittsburgh, when we came here, we expected to win. Yeah. Ben Roethlisberger won a lot of games here. But the fans always showed up. They always talk cash money from the stands. Mm -hmm. And they've been waiting yeah. for a champion, waiting for that team to explode 
and bring something to Pittsburgh that they haven't had. When you think about the city of Cleveland, how it fits you, how much, though, do you want to get that win for these fans who have supported no matter what was going on in Cleveland? They supported the Browns. Yeah, I mean, these fans here are the best in the world. I mean, they 0 and 16. They're gonna be. They're, that stage is gonna be full, and it's gonna be all Browns fan. Like we're like we're undefeated. They're rowdy and intense, and I think, man, just just having them at our side through thick and thin. To we've been horrible at times. Like even when I've been here, we've been bad, and they they've been right there with us. You know, no matter what. And I think they deserve it more than anybody. Just to have a, at least a winning team. Like we can give them a winning team at least. You know, but to have further than that, like a championship, a Super Bowl. I mean, man, I've I've heard stories about. You know, when, when LeBron James won the championship and they had the parade, I heard that it was crazy. And the people would say, you know, that'd be nothing compared to if y'all won Super Bowl. And I believe that wholeheartedly. I think if we won Super Bowl, I can't even imagine what it would look like downtown. It would, it would be bad. What do you care about other than being the best running back you can possibly be? I know you supported uh, sudden infant death. You wanted mm -hmm. to bring awareness to that with your cleats. You know, you go back home and train for six months. What are your other interests other than this? It's my family, you know, um, my mom, my brother, my little sister, and, and my brother and little sister's kids. They have, um, my, my brother has a daughter. My sister has, has a son. So I think just hanging out with them at home, that's, that's all I care about is my family and family and football. You know, you mentioned family and football and this all started from that point, uh, talking about Chubb Town and, you know, your grandfather and all the things that they've done to build a tradition in that name. You know, Fred mentioned the goals of the Jim Browns and obviously individual goals that you can have yearly. But when you think about where you could be going forward as it pertains to your place in this game, do you think Hall of Fame? Do you think greatest running back ever? Because Fred often says he felt like if he set those goals earlier, he would have been a different player. He would have approached it a different way. Do you ever think that far ahead? It's hard for me to think that far ahead, you know, just how I approach my days just day by day. So, you know, I, the work I put in today, I hope it does lead me to, you know, a better future Hall of Famer. But it's hard for me to think about that when I we can't even get eight wins. You know, it's hard for me to think about that when we're playing at this at this level, you know, my mind is just on helping my team win games and, you know, playing, playing my best to help my team win. I want to I want to have a great game to help my team win. You know, that's that's the biggest thing for me. How does that how does that work for you, though? Right. You great high school player. You you attend Georgia, right? A team that's always going to win, playing in the best conference in football. And you've now been in this place where it's like we can't get over the hump. Yeah. We could get to the playoffs, get a win. We lose to the Kansas City Chiefs. We're expecting to be better the next year. The bottom falls out, right? There, it seems like there's always another shoe that is dropped here. How have you maintained your drive and maintained who you are as a person in those times? I mean, it just goes back to me being in high school, just how, how I came up, how I always worked. And um, it's just it's instilled inside of me. I think the biggest way you know, because I stay on top of my game. You know, I'm disciplined. I work hard. I do everything right. And on, on Sundays, I want I go out and I, I try to perform at my, at my best. So the biggest thing to go from good to great for me to contribute to the team is bringing guys with me. You know, it's been times where I go do extra by myself, and at the end of the day, that's helping me out, but it's not helping the team out. So how can I, you know, pull guys with me? Be like, hey, let's get this extra work in. You know, it works for me. Maybe it works for you. Or you can find your own niche. Like, well, what works for you? You know, do it. Do extra. Do more. We can always do more. And for me, you know, I feel like I can always do more on the field. You know, I don't got to come out on third on third down. I can stay out in two minutes. If you need me, you know, put the ball in my hands. Need me to block. I'll do that. Any way to win games, and I'm down to do it. I think it's okay to have, you know, a selfish mindset in mm -hmm. a sense, which will indirectly you know, help the team. Yeah. You're going to always impact the team, but with the state of the position, you know, you have to think about Nick Chubb yeah. first and foremost. And then from there, as I mentioned, you're going to indirectly help the team. Yeah. Whether you decide, if you're, if you're looking at it from this lens or this lens, you're going to always help the team, but you also have to set yourself up and put yourself in position so that you are able to take care of your family 
yeah. in the long run because with football, look at the guys that were drafted in front of you. Mm -hmm. Saquon went two, Rashad Penny went 27, and uh, Sony went 31. 31. And all those guys sustained some sort of injury that have affected their career. And you've been blessed and pretty healthy. Yeah. You know, as long as you keep staying the course and continue that mindset, I think you can catch Jim Brown. Yeah. You know, with, with some luck, you know, from a health standpoint. Yeah. Cause you got all the tools. You got everything. You're you're made, you're cut from the right cloth. Mm -hmm. So I'm 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 rooting for you to yeah, stay I healthy. It. Cause I, I love enjoy watching you play. But also to add on to what RC was talking about, these fans are crazy here in Cleveland. Back in 1950, when we were doing the sandbox cuts and those drills, we were in a game here. Uh, I'm not sure which stadium, but it was when they allowed bottles <laughs> in the stadium. And we had a bad call. Well, a good call for us, yeah. bad for you guys. And all of the fans were throwing bottles yeah. from the upper it. deck. Mm -hmm. The upper deck, glass bottles. Yeah. From that point forward, the NFL, no, <laughs> only plastic bottles yeah. in the stadium. So uh, you got rich tradition here. Your fans are going to always be behind yeah. you. You just got to keep doing your thing to excite them, and they're ready to go. Yeah, I know. For sure. I yeah. appreciate that. Chad, you think, like, I know you're from Georgia as well. Yeah. Right? You managed to find trouble in Georgia. Yeah. yeah. I don't, is, is Cedar Town different than where you grew up? Because I don't know if Nick tries to have an off-field life. I was, are you a robot? <laughs> like, well, you got an old lady. Like, but he, had, RC asked your question earlier, and I thought it would get into, like, hobbies that you have. Yeah, and yeah. you go back to talking about squatting and shit. <laughs> 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 what do you got a woman? Like, what do you do for fun? Is that fun in Nick Tubbs' life? Man, my fun, man. I got two dogs. I got German Shepherds. So, I mean, <laughs> I play with them. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like I... I put so much time into football, man. Like I, I do, I go out. I have friends. I have my boys back home. We we step out sometimes. Yeah. You know, we we travel. But I mean, back with my mom, damn, I got a workout for Monday. You know, I can't really enjoy myself like I want to. But yeah, I mean, I, I chill. I have, I go out, man. I have fun. I have a good time. I live hey, a good me, life. Let me take you out. Let's go. We're we we gonna go back go? to Atlanta. You Atlanta. Know, you ever chill in Atlanta? I chill in Atlanta. Let me go to Atlanta and enjoy ourselves, man. I'm down. Hey, Chad, what do you, you know? You don't have a lot of fun when you go, I have a good time. Like, you know what I'm saying? You <laughs> I have a good time. He was trying to convince himself. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he thought to himself, nah. do I ever have fun? <laughs> I don't feel like. I vacationed in 2017 <laughs> once. If, if, if you know somebody I'm cool with, I mean, you, can, you can ask Reem. You can ask some boys in the locker room, like Njoku, yeah. or my boys back home. You can, you can ask about when we, when we step yeah. out. Do Don, you, Don sent me stuff out before. Do you feel as if you have to uphold the the persona that you have now? Because a lot of people think you are serious, yeah, you know. Yeah. Do you feel you feel as if you have to uphold that? Uh, in a way, you know, I'm 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 on, I'm the whole you know Batman. That's my thing. Like I like Batman. I feel like I gotta uphold that in a way. Like Bruce Wayne. Like I wear all black when I go out, or I don't talk much. You know, you don't you don't really know much about me. Like I'm a, I'm an enigma or something, but. When I'm out with my boys, man, I try to relax. You know, I don't really, yeah. I don't really care. It's unquestioned to football people who you are and what you mean to this team, what you've done since being drafted by um, the Cleveland Browns in 2018. But to the rest of the world, I think it's still not as known because you guys don't win, right? Yeah. They're, they're not propping you up on that national platform that some of these other running backs get. And you said earlier you do think you're the best back. What do you feel, though, if any, is your responsibility to put this position in a spot where they can get paid going forward, where they can be treated differently? How do you feel you can affect that, whether it be by your play or your work? It's by my play, for one. Um, just um, staying healthy, which I've done a good job of, and just playing at a high level. and not being replaceable and uh, take care of my work. I feel like I do all those things, but way I could help out more would be, would be being more vocal, which I'm not I'm not natural. You know, I've always been a quiet guy. Uh, people never look to me to talk, and all of a sudden, everybody want me to talk, you know? <laughs> so now it's, it's like... Yeah. Yeah, Talking to like, us. Like, like this, you know what I mean? Like, everybody want to interview me now, want me to talk, want me to be vocal on the field, which I've never done. And so it's, it's a challenge for me, but... To get my team better and to get the running back position better, you know, I got to speak up and I got to be that, be a vocal guy. I got to be a leader, you know, for now even the NFL, you know, and for my team most importantly. But it's a challenge for me just to just to even do this, just to talk. And I, I don't let people in. But I think for Cleveland and for running backs, I mean, I got I to gotta do a better job of talking more.
I mean, and, and not letting people in isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm in no way saying that, you know, the way that you've conducted yourself has hurt you because it hasn't, because your job is to run the football and you do that as well as anybody in the world. But when you think about the stardom, when you think about the way we do see the Saquon Barkley's, even though he's in New York, anybody in Cleveland who's ever watched you play can say, nah, Nick Chubb is the guy. Nick Chubb is someone who could be out in the front of it. What is it going to take to get this team elevated to that point? Not just the work. How does the how do the 2023 Cleveland Browns compete to win the AFC North and become a playoff team? If I knew that answer, yeah, we just do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, man, just us us coming together. You know, it's been it's been seasons where. We've had so much talent, and we've we win like five or six games. And I think, you know, I think about that at nighttime all the time. I think about I think back to when I was at Georgia, my junior year with Coach Mark, first year, and we were bad. We were like horrible. Like we lost to like Tech, Vanderbilt. It was it was a bad year. But literally that next year, we're in a national championship. And so I always think back to like, what was the biggest difference to get us from being a bad team? So the next year, going all the way, when I I stay up at night thinking about it. Like I'm, I really stay up thinking about what the difference was, and what I can think of is just our team was player led. Our team was player led. Like we didn't we didn't allow. We had a standard, and us as players, we held everybody to that standard. Like one person not doing something right, we all jumped on them. If one guy is not doing something right. We all jumped on them, it's contagious. And then like, the whole team jumps on them. And then we're all one. And practice was so competitive back in Georgia. Like that senior year, man, if, 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 if it's a drill when it's, um, it's like no defense, like, we just running routes, never saw a drop. And team period, we had run versus run, um, defense versus offense, ones versus ones. We had Roquan Smith over there. I mean, we going at it. Like we are crazy, like pads popping, like it's competitive, high level. And we were just a team, man. We we loved to practice, high intensity. We came together. We knew it took the win, and we we never faltered. We never like, we never looked back. We just kept going forward. I think I think us, I think we have ways to go till we get there. I think we need to come together more as a team. I think I need to be a, be a better leader, like vocally. And I think we all got to just you know find our standard, which we have, but we got to stick to it and stay there. And I think there's no ceiling to where, where we can go. So this is my last thing. I watched a clip of you recently at practice, and maybe it was the drill. Maybe it was y'all was doing four-minute drill, and y'all was supposed to be running the ball, where you break it and you slide before yeah. the end zone. Now, you've done this in the game as yeah. well. And the whole world, including myself, goes, ah, that makes sense. That's Nick Chubb. Yeah. He actually doesn't care about the stat. <laughs> he doesn't care about the touchdown. He doesn't care about the extra yardage. Yeah. This is who he's shown himself to be. When you do something like that and you actually practice it and you do hear all the people that have an opportunity to analyze you or give their opinion on you go, it makes sense because he is such an unselfish yeah. football player. Is that something that you take pride in? I do. I'm, I'm a team player. I mean, everything I do, like when I'm squatting, when I'm working out, running, like the only thing on my mind is my team, my team in Cleveland. Like that's the only thing I care about. I'm doing that for everyone around me just so I can be in, in the best shape for when I come back so we can win games, I can do my part. But I do take pride in it. But you know, last year it, it came back to bite me because I didn't go down versus the Jets. <laughs> I ended up scoring we were like two touchdowns, I'm in love and they come back and win. You know, so, but yeah, that was, that was a four minute drill yesterday, well, two days ago. But bro, just as your homeboy now, I say, you taking money out your pocket though. <laughs> we're, we're, as quiet as you are, not going out like uh, like Freddie said, you one of the best backs yeah. in the league. You're one of the most explosive offensive players yeah. in the world at football. You should be on way more commercials. You should have way more crap. But yeah. like Baker said, had all the commercials. Yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you, you ever think about me that like you saying he, I thought of it because I somehow unselfish yeah. you are, but can't you be a little selfish with your money? And I could be, you know, I've I've turned down national commercial deals before and like, I that's just not me, man. I'm just Small town kid, I don't, I don't yeah, care about it. Get I mean, a check. I get the check, but I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, like that's just not who I am. You know, I'm, I'm gonna stick to who I am yeah. over anything. You know, I wish, um, man, there's so many similarities. Just, um, just hearing you speak, you know, your demeanor, the entire piece, where you are in your career, 
that I wish you can kind of go back or I can paint a picture for you. The person I was as a player, I turned down opportunities. That later in my career, I, I learned that it wasn't always about the money. Mm -hmm. It was just more so about just being available and, and, and having people understand that they can depend on you yeah. when they make that call. Because the expectations are, we believe in you as a brand, which is what you are. So they want to reward you for that. And you have to reward yourself by taking advantage of it. No, you might not always feel like it, but in terms of setting yourself up for post-career, yeah. trust me, you're going to look back and say, man, I wish I had done a few more yeah. of those opportunities because it's in you. Yeah. Like, you're very articulate. You go out there, you know, RC says you got your thirst trap tape. Hey, like, people know you're a handsome young man. So <laughs> those opportunities are going to be there for you. Uh, and I just wanted to just touch on that. But uh, quickly, can you recall a pivotal moment or experience or a person of influence that have, you know, helped you or led you to be the successful person you are now? I would, I would start off with a moment. The moment is probably when I hurt my knee. Um, I was in a very dark place uh, back then, just not knowing if I was ever going to play again or be the same caliber of player I was before. So I went through a lot, you know. Um, that changed my career because I realized you can't take it for granted. And from that day on, I just, you know, I worked even harder. But a person is probably just my mom. Uh, my mom probably the strongest person I know. She raised three kids on her own and she worked so many jobs and I just remember her having like crazy jobs like she she was like a, a cook in the hospital she was working at the Atlanta Dome like in the concession stands um to make sure that me and my brother had everything we, we we wanted and needed and I think just her working as hard as she did you know now now I want to work as hard as I can and pay her back for all the good things she did for us I love it well man you we're all big fans. Yeah. It's, it's hard for me to be vocal about my fandom based on where I play football in Pittsburgh. Uh, but I do, man. And the, the biggest compliment you can ever give offensive players, I felt that way about Fred as well, is like I'd go to war with that dude. If I, if I had that guy on my team, I feel like I can win. And I think every Cleveland Brown, every Cleveland Brown fan feels that way about you. Uh, personality, whatever it is, man, when, when the lights are on, bro, you always show up, and that's what's important, bro. We wish you the best of luck. I mean, there's two weeks this year. You can sit out and you play Pittsburgh. You don't have to be out there. You know, you figure 15 weeks, you'll still rush for like 13, yeah. 1,400, you know, make the Pro Bowl. But nah, man, uh, best of luck this year, bro. Thank you for your time. Appreciate y'all. Yes, Thank you. Bro. Hey, that Joe could do too. He ball behind tight. Yeah, look, baby, got the, he thing. dressed like the bro. uniform, yes, man. It's a teach tape, dog. It is man, a teach tape, yo. Hey, when you when you get to college though, and you got Keith there, Ty, yeah. you there with Sony, there was never a time where you was like, hold on, man, I might not play. Like, I, you know, I did think that. I thought I was gonna get shirted. I did, really? yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, Ty, 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 Keith was yeah. actually he had like same year as Ty. They was, right. But Keith got hurt, mm -hmm. and it's only like five star. He was like starting ahead of me, I guess because of that reason. Right. But, yeah. I was fortunate. It's kind of like um, the Frank Gore story. You know, Frank going to Miami behind yeah. all those guys, and yeah. he sort of came out to yeah. be the best one right. you know, in the group, and he played the longest, all that different mm -hmm. stuff. It's a good story. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up.